Hi, my name is Bill Reichert, and I'm a partner here at Pegasus Tech Ventures. And today we're going to talk about the art of raising capital, how to win the hearts and minds of investors. Now, if you want to win the hearts and minds of investors, you got to start with Human Anatomy 101. So what do I mean by this? Well, what we know is that an effective communicator connects with three body parts. You've got to connect with the head, of course. You've got to say something that is logical, that we can understand, that makes sense in terms of our understanding of the physics of the world and the business of the world. So we spend most of our time coaching entrepreneurs on this part, on making sure that the presentations to investors are logical and make sense. When, when I was an entrepreneur, I spent most of my time trying to build this compelling logical argument as to why the investor should invest in my company. But I'll tell you what, that's not good enough. It's not good enough to have a sound logical argument with evidence and data. The head is not all you need to connect with. You also need to connect with the heart. So believe it or not, most investors don't invest with their brains, they invest with their hearts. The way venture capital works is investors fall in love with companies and then they rationalize their investment by doing the diligence and looking at the numbers and doing the market research. But if you want to be successful raising capital from a venture capital firm, you've got to get them to fall in love. You've got to get their heart beating faster. You've got to get their pulse racing. You've got to get them to say, wow, that's amazing. How do you do that? Tell me more. So you want to get investors to fall in love with you. That's the second body part, but there's a third body part. The third body part is the gut. So you got to pass the gut check. We know that, that human beings have an instinctive, immediate reaction to every person they meet and every hot idea they hear. We immediately categorize people and ideas into things we trust and believe or don't trust and don't believe. So Sometimes entrepreneurs, they get a little overenthusiastic, they get a little carried away, they tend to exaggerate, they come on a little too strong, and they alienate investors. They don't pass the gut check. The reaction is, I want to run away from this entrepreneur rather than I want to spend more time with this entrepreneur. So those are the three body parts you got to connect with, the head, the heart, and the gut. So now, which one do you think is the most important? The most important is the heart. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You got to connect with the brain, but you also got to get them to fall in love. And so that's why we're going to talk about the top 10 rules for winning the hearts and minds of investors. So rule number one is you've got to stand out. So this goes back to getting them to fall in love. It's not good enough to have a good enough presentation, to have a good enough idea, to have good enough financials. You've got to stand out. Now, a lot of entrepreneurs were raised to believe that, you know, you shouldn't brag, you shouldn't, you know, be immodest. But I will tell you, if you want to get venture capital, you've got to stand out. High confidence is way more exciting than false modesty. So now the question is, how do you stand out? How do you get to wow? The way you get to wow is you've got to make sure first you are clear about what it is your business is doing. Amazingly, a lot of entrepreneurs are not very good at communicating clearly even what they're doing. I can't believe how many times I've listened to a pitch and halfway through the pitch, I'm still thinking, what do these guys do? So make sure right at the front end, you are clear about what your business is, but that's not good enough. You also have to be compelling. You've got to make sure that what you are offering is 10 times better than anyone else. It's one tenth the cost. It lasts five times longer. You've got to have a compelling value proposition that is going to cause your customers to fall in love with your product and with your company that's what gets investors to fall in love and want to invest. 
You've got to have a compelling value proposition. But then third, you've got to be credible. As I said before, entrepreneurs have a tendency to be very optimistic and may tend to exaggerate. If you exaggerate, then maybe you're going to destroy your credibility. You're not going to, we're not going to trust what you were saying. So we want evidence that what you're saying is true in order to be credible. So be clear, be compelling, be credible. Be clear connects with the head. Be compelling, gets my heart beating faster. Be credible, passes the gut check. So that's the key to getting to wow. And getting to wow is the key to standing out, separating yourself from the pack of all of those other entrepreneurs that are pitching to VCs, standing out above the rest of the entrepreneur competition. Rule number two is you got to get your fundamentals right. When you're starting up a company, it's real company, it's really important that you get things done in the right way. If we come across a company that's just kind of a mess in terms of the way it was set up, we're going to walk away. So what are the fundamentals you got to make sure you get right? One is you got to make sure you and your co-founders set up your stock allocations and restrictions in just the right way. So the way you distribute stock and the protections you put on your founder's stock are really important. Second, we wanna make sure that you're paying attention to your intellectual property. Your intellectual property is going to be key to maintaining your competitive advantage. And we wanna know that you're on top of the proper procedures to protect your proprietary know-how and your patentable intellectual property. Third, we wanna make sure that you've set up your company legally correctly in compliance with local, state, federal, and other laws. So we want to make sure that you've done the right job of staying in compliance with all the laws that you have to stay in compliance with. And then last, when you bring people on, generally entrepreneurs, when you're in startup mode, you bring in contractors and advisors and part-time help. You've got to make sure that you paper that all correctly. You have the correct contracts and relationships with your contractors so that you own all of the intellectual property. So you created some residual liabilities that are going to get you into trouble later. So I know you don't want to have to worry about all these details of legal administrative compliance things. We know that's hard for you and that's okay. Just make sure you get good counsel. Just make sure you get the right legal representation, a law firm that understands venture capital, that understands the issues that startup companies face to put your company together the right way. The third rule is you got to make sure you get your numbers right. So what are the numbers that you need to be paying attention to as an entrepreneur that we're going to be paying attention to as prospective investors? Well, these are the numbers that frequently entrepreneurs get wrong, that if you get wrong, is going to hurt you when you're pitching to investors. First, you got to make sure that you size your market the right way. Don't go out there and Google, you know, the auto parts industry, which is a $56 billion annual business and say, because you've got some software for distributors, that you're going after a $56 billion company, in industry. You're not make sure that you segment the market to carefully identify who your target customers are and size that market opportunity according to what you're really going to deliver. You know, we have never seen a company fail because the market was too small. The reason companies fail is because they don't get enough customers. What we want to see when you're analyzing your market opportunity is that you really understand who the right customers are, how you're going to get to them, how many they are, how you're going to convert them into customers, and how you're going to upsell them for greater revenues. So show us that you really understand the dynamics of your market opportunity. Don't just throw out some big number as the market size and think we're going to be impressed, because we won't. <laughs> You also have to make sure that you get your projected revenues right. Generally, entrepreneurs are overly optimistic about how fast and how big they can build a company. Do the research on other successful companies and talk to people who know what it takes to scale a company. Be realistic. You can be optimistic, you can be aggressive, but still it's important you're not delusional about how big you can get your company, how quickly. 
The other thing that really traps entrepreneurs is misunderstanding their sales cycle. So we're investing in you as a business person, creating a business that's going to have economics associated with it. And that means you really have to understand your sales cycle and your unit economics. So show us that you have a deep understanding of what it takes to find and convert and get payment from customers. And we understand the cost, and you understand the cost to acquire those customers and the value of those customers over time. Those are your unit economics. We're gonna drill you on that. You better know what those numbers are. And then last, another number that's really important for you to understand is a fair valuation for your company. Frequently entrepreneurs are way off on this. Frequently too high, often too low. Go do the research, find out what comparable companies are getting in the venture capital market and make sure that your valuation expectations are in the right range that you won't alienate investors when you talk about where you think your company should be valued. So that's the rule, get your numbers right. Rule number four is it's really important to build a high performing team. So you'll hear this a lot from venture capitalists. We invest in teams. We're looking for a team that knows how to scale a company to being a successful big company. So what's the secret to building a high-performing team? Well, there are a few different secrets, but some key secrets are, first of all, make sure that you build a team of leaders. You know, frequently entrepreneurs think they're the leaders and they should go hire followers. Well, that's not right, because if everything, every decision has to be made by you, you're never going to scale your company you need to be able to push decision-making out to the edge. That means you need to be able to hire people who have leadership capabilities. So hire a team of leaders, give them leadership responsibility, and make sure they take responsibility for leading in their particular domain. The other thing you wanna see in your team is alignment across the team. You may have just great talent, they may be superstars, but if people aren't aligned, in terms of the mission of your company, the vision of your company, the values of your company, and the norms with which you operate, then you're gonna wind up with inefficiency and chaos inside the organization. People doing all sorts of different things that are not aligned with your mission and targets. So make sure you line people up behind a shared mission and shared values and norms. And then last, it's really important when you bring on this team of leaders and you get them all aligned behind you, that you listen to everyone. So everyone should be heard because again, you want the expertise and leadership to be at the edge. And so if you don't listen to the people who are at the edge, who are with the customers, who are out in the field, you're not gonna know what's going on out there. So listen to everyone, give everyone a voice, give them the opportunity to share their intelligence with you on what's the best decision to be made. And now the challenge for entrepreneurs is if you get a lot of high achieving individuals who like to be heard and you're in meetings trying to make decisions, you're gonna get disagreement. You're gonna get disagreement, that's okay. You do not want to suppress disagreement. You don't wanna crush other people's ideas. You want, to, you want to listen to them and bring them up on top of the table. Then you discuss, then you come to a decision, and then what you have to make sure is that everybody commits to that decision. So some people call this the mantra of disagree, then commit. You can disagree, you can voice a different point of view, you can express your opinion, but once the team has come to a decision, you've got to commit. So if somebody sabotages a decision because they said they disagreed with it, then you got to get them off the bus. People, once they come onto the team, once you make a commitment, you've got to stick with that commitment. So that's the key to building high performing teams and building a high performing team is critical to getting investment from venture capital firms. The fifth rule, this is a little bit different. The fifth rule is, you gotta learn how to steal. Now, my partners cringe when I, when I tell this to entrepreneurs, you know, Bill, do you really wanna tell them to steal? No, 
But what I mean by this, what I mean by this is it is important for you to be scanning the world, looking for the best ideas that are going to be relevant for your business. So think about Steve Jobs and Apple as an example, right? So think about Apple. Apple is considered one of the most innovative companies in the world. But what did Apple invent? Apple did not invent the microcomputer. Apple did not invent the mouse. Apple didn't invent the GUI interface. Apple did not invent the MP3 player. Apple did not invent the smartphone. Apple did not invent the tablet. Apple did not invent the smartwatch. What did Apple invent? Apple has not invented products. What they've done is they've borrowed from other technologies, integrated technologies together into new products that are innovative products that have taken over the world. So you don't have to be an inventor. You don't have to come up with everything yourself. Scan the world for the best ideas, for the best technologies, for the best approaches, for the best business models, and borrow them and apply them in your own unique particular way. That's fine. That's okay. So I say, you know, learn how to steal. Don't steal cash. Don't steal intellectual property. But feel free to find other ideas that are going to be relevant to you and integrate them into your innovative solution. Rule number six is show us you can sell. So I can't believe how little attention is paid in entrepreneur education to the importance of being able to sell. So in fact, you know, in all of our cultures, we generally disparage salespeople. Why is that? Entrepreneurship is all about selling. And when you meet a VC, we are, enjoy your vision, we enjoy your passion, that's great. But to be honest, what we really wanna see is that you know how to sell. We wanna see that you've been out there in the field. <clears throat> You're not hiding out in your lab. You're not fiddling at your computer or at your bench with your product. You're out in the field with customers. You're talking to customers. You're playing around with ideas. You're looking for solutions that are going to create a lot of value for those customers. We want to see that you're out there selling. So we'll, we'll see that when you're talking to us as well, because raising venture capital is a sales process. Now, it's a pretty unusual sales process, but we want to see that you can manage, take charge of that sales process the same way that we hope you're taking charge of sales out in the field to your target customers. Show us that you know how to sell. Rule number seven, <clears throat> again, this is kind of a different rule. I'm telling you, I want you to be intolerant. Now that sounds a little odd, right? But what I mean by that is we want you to have a very high sense of urgency about everything that you were doing. Believe it or not, VCs don't invest in nice entrepreneurs. We invest in entrepreneurs that have an intensity and urgency to get things done to change the universe. So what we want to see is that you have intense urgency about everything you are doing. You are not going to tolerate slips and mistakes and delays. You are going to drive to make sure no matter what this thing happens. So when I say we don't invest in people who are nice, what I mean is, is we want you to be persistent, even with us, even with us. We don't want you to defer to VCs. You should be professional and assertive about following up with investors whenever you're trying to convince them to invest in you. Keep on pushing until you get a firm response. Do not let investors off the hook during the fundraising process. Show that you have an intense sense of urgency that your particular train is leaving the station and if we don't get on board, we're gonna miss this opportunity. So be intolerant, don't just be nice. Rule number eight is you gotta build a network. You can't do it alone. So you can't just do it with your co-founders or with the people inside your company. You've got to extend outside your company. Go find advisors who are really smart 
about your technology, about your target customers, about the competitive environment, about scaling your business. Go find good advisors who are very credible and will be helpful to you, not just window dressing, but truly helpful individuals who can advise you. You can create a formal advisory board or informal network of, of advisory relationships. Don't worry too much about the structure. Just make sure that you plug in to smart people who can help you across a lot of different domains. And then get out there and build a larger network of relationships of people who know what you're up to, who can help you possibly recruit other people, find investors, find customers, find partners. Your network is one of the most valuable assets you have. So it's really important to build a network and work that network. Make sure you get the messages out and take advantage of the opportunity to leverage other people to help you build and scale your company. Rule number nine then is as you build your network, as you connect with investors, turn us into evangelists. So how do you turn an investor into an evangelist? The trick is to make sure that you have a wow that we resonate with. So back to where I was saying at the beginning about the way you stand out, you stand out by having something that's going to make us say, wow. That means we understand clearly what you're doing, we understand your compelling value proposition, and we have evidence that you are credible. If that is true, and that, that, that is easy enough for us to remember and repeat, we're gonna go tell that to other people. We're gonna talk about, hey, that company that we met that is doing this amazing thing with this extraordinary technology, we're gonna take it back to our partners and say, you gotta meet with this team of entrepreneurs. Turn us into evangelists, leverage us, to go get the word out to other people about this brilliant company that is amazing technology that creates incredible value. That's the kind of evangelism you want out there. And then rule number 10, rule number 10 is it's important to focus on creating value, not on making money. Now, this may sound contrary because, you know, probably everybody's told you those VCs, they want to make a bunch of money. That's the whole business of venture capital. Yes, it is true. We have an obligation to generate outsized returns to our limited partners. But when we see a team come into our office that is focused on making money, we're not interested in that team because there are lots of ways to make money. Entrepreneurship is one of the hardest ways to make money. We want entrepreneurs who are dedicated to solving a problem or creating an opportunity that's going to create extraordinary value for their customers and for the world. Because if the going gets tough, and I assure you, the going is going to get tough. If the going gets tough and all you care about is making money, you're going to say, boy, there's got to be an easier way to make money. But if you are dedicated to creating value, to making a dent in the universe, when the going gets tough, those entrepreneurs figure out a way to get through it, to persist, to get around obstacles, to go over obstacles. That's what we invest in. We invest in those persistent entrepreneurs who are dedicated to creating value, to making a dent in the universe. So those are the top 10 rules for winning the hearts and minds of investors, the secret to raising capital from venture capital. One, you got to stand out. You got to get to wow. Two, you got to get your fundamentals right. Set the company up the right way. Get good legal counsel to make sure you're in compliance. Three, get your numbers right. Make sure you understand your market opportunity and your, your sales projections and your unit economics. Four, build a high performing team of leaders. Build out a team of people who can all contribute to scaling your company. Five, be an innovator, not an inventor. Be open to other ideas and how you can incorporate them into your innovation. Six, make sure you show us how you can sell. Seven, build a network and work it. Eight, be intolerant of delays. Show a high, intense sense of urgency. Nine, create evangelists who are going to spread the word of your company. And 10, focus on creating value. Those are the top 10 rules to the art of raising capital, how to win the hearts and minds of investors. 
I hope you found this useful and I look forward to the opportunity to tell you more in future Pegasus videos. Thank you very much.